Hi, welcome to our third breakout at Disabled and Proud Leading Change, an online conference for and by students with disabilities. The theme of this breakout is activism. This session is called, What is a Disability Cultural Center? The session will start with three pre-recorded presentations. When the recordings are over, a moderator will open the Q&A between presenters and audience members in the text chat window below the video screen. If you'd like to ask a question, use the enter your message text box at the bottom of the chat. Discussion with presenters will end at 10 minutes before the hour to give everyone time to get to their next session. But we encourage students to continue the discussion in the chat lounge. The chat lounge is one of the main menu links at the top of your screen. When you arrive in the lounge, look for the chat title that is the same as this panel title. What is a Disability Cultural Center? Slide shows a young black man with short hair and eyeglasses speaking at a standing microphone. He is on a dark stage lit by a spotlight. All slide background photos are from Disabled and Proud 2014 at Syracuse University and are used courtesy of the Syracuse Department of Education. As a part of DREAM's efforts to build networking, training, and mentoring opportunities for college students with disabilities, we would appreciate if you would take a few minutes to review this session at www.disabledandproud.org backslash evaluation. Your review will help us plan for upcoming programs and events for students with disabilities and their allies. Slide background image presents a young Asian American person with short length black hair and eyeglasses speaking at a standing mic. All the virtual tours in this session come from folks who have participated in the opening of disability cultural centers at their universities this past year. The first recording of the session is by Cole S. Rich from the University of Arizona. The Disability Cultural Center there was launched last month. Then we'll have a recorded presentation from Dan Darko at Miami University in Ohio, where they dedicated their Disability Cultural Center just a couple of weeks ago. Finally, we'll tour with Liz Thompson from University of Illinois in Chicago, where they opened a Disability Cultural Center this past spring. After the recordings, don't forget to go to the chat window to participate in the Q&A with, with Cole, Dan, and Liz. Slide background image shows a young white woman who is using a microphone in a wheelchair during a pause in her performance. Our first presentation today is from Elizabeth Liz Thompson, who will show us around the Disability Cultural Center at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Title slide, a virtual tour of the University of Illinois at Chicago's Disability Cultural Center, DCC, for the NCCSD Disabled and Proud Conference 2018. View of Chicago's skyline with a predominant building jutting upward being Willis Tower, formerly known as Sears Tower, the sky is blue with bright sunlight. UIC, founded in 1982, is a Research One large urban public higher ed institution located in Chicago's West Loop downtown neighborhood. There are approximately 19,000 undergraduates and 10,000 graduate and professional students. UIC has 15 colleges and 86 bachelor's programs. While there are residence halls, it is still a predominantly commuter campus. The student population is very diverse by race, ethnicity, religion, gender identity and expression, disability, sexual orientation, and immigrant status. Description, outdoor campus images with lush fall leaves and students walking between classes. Administratively, the DCC is located in Academic Affairs, one of seven cultural and identity centers. All the centers report to the Office of Diversity, which reports to the provost. Additionally, Disability-related units on campus are the Chancellor's Committee on the Status of Persons with Disabilities, the Disability Resource Center, and the Dis Department of Disability and Human Development, which has an undergraduate major, minor, master's, and PhD program, the first in the country. 
Description. Nell Kerr, a white, disabled, PhD student and activist with short brown hair, presents at the annual UIC Disability Studies Conference with an ASL interpreter behind her. Staff structure. DCC staff members currently include full-time and salary director Roxana Stupp, program coordinator Lily Diego Johnson, part-time graduate assistant and PhD candidate in disability studies Brian Hayburn, and undergraduate intern Sarah Hernandez. Description. Director Stupp stands at podium with a color group photo projected on a screen. The UIC DCC was created in February 2018. However, the premiere happened on September 11, 2018. The idea of having some kind of formal and institutional disability cultural staff person and program has long been in the making. Prior to the DCC, the Disability Resource Center had been located with the other cultural centers for understanding and social change. Originally, disabled student activists and allies advocated for the insertion of a full-time disability cultural staff person and additional funding within the Disability Resource Center. However, due to a reporting line change with the DRC and other factors, the provost gave the approval to create a separate uni unit, the Disability Cultural Center. Entering through the door, a small table has various size flyers announcing different events. Colored flyers in a 3x3 grid read, Disability Pride, Identity, UIC, and Our History, Our Present, Our Future. Along a long wall are color images 11 by 17 inch of various disabled performers. Beneath them are large print text explaining the art and culture. Also on the wall is five black chalkboard circles. Each one has a different quote from a person with a disability. Inside are students and faculty. One white female student is tabling for Bodies of Work, a disability arts and culture organization within UIC. She speaks with a male student. DCC director Stupp sits and speaks with keynote speaker, Dr. Carrie Sandal, who sits in a wheelchair near the refreshment table. Description. A red horizontal cloth banner hangs on a wall outside of the new space in the library and reads UIC Disability Cultural Center in white painted capital letters. Disability Cultural Center, phone 312-355-7050. Email address dcc at uic.edu. Mailing address 801 South Morgan Street, Chicago, Illinois 60607 dcc.uic.edu, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you to Director Roxana Stupp, UIC Disability Cultural Center. Images created, described, and voiced by Liz Thompson, PhD candidate, Disability Studies, University of Illinois, Chicago, lthomson at uic.edu, October 2018. Please do not use without express permission. Next, Dan Darko will take us on a tour of the Disability Cultural Center at Miami University in Ohio. Title slide pictured, Miami University's Disability Cultural Space, presented by Dan Darko, Coordinator, Miller Center for Student Disability Services. Hello and welcome to Miami University, located in Oxford, Ohio. My name is Dan Darko, and I'm a coordinator in our Miller Center for Student Disability Services, which features a disability cultural space. We can begin our tour here in our elevator in Shriver Center, as it is our main access point. This elevator features unique access features for individuals of all abilities to access our space, utilizing push buttons at the height of wheelchair joysticks, as well as near the ground for individuals who utilize various mobility devices. We will now transition to our disability cultural space in our Miller Center to view the features that this space has. Video of Dan rolling down the hallway in his power wheelchair next to a service dog. Virtual tour. Pictured in our lounge is a TV with a shelving unit around it holding multimedia items. Panning to our left, we see paintings on the wall with furniture around it, including two chairs and a couch. Moving on, we have a technology cube, which we will discuss later, and tables and chairs in our waiting area. Featured is a ceramic art piece 
created by a blind individual of hands holding playing cards. Pictured now on the screen is a poster of an event that our Students with Disabilities Advisory Council sponsored bringing hard of hearing comedian DJ Demers to campus. The last painting we will feature is an abstract piece completed by a 14 year old hard of hearing boy. The painting is titled Communication Breakdown. It is an abstract piece with orange, yellow, black, green, and red on the canvas. Inside the canvas, there is a call out at the top right that says, we can't hear you, please repeat. In addition, there is a about the drawing written on the painting that says, being deaf or hard of hearing, is like when you use a radio and can't connect with the other person, meaning there are always times every day when you cannot understand others. Advantages slash disadvantages are for everyone. Ian Lex. We are now located in our Miller Center for Student Disability Services, which houses our disability cultural space. A disability cultural center, in my opinion, is a space for students with disabilities to be authentic to who they are, a space to enjoy, relax, and celebrate disability culture. Our space also is used by students without disabilities to learn about disability, disability identity, and share in disability culture. Our disability cultural space, located within the Miller Center, is fairly new. The Miller Center for Student Disability Services was dedicated in September of 2018. Jay Scott and Susan McDonald Miller donated a significant amount of money in order to support students with disabilities on Miami's campus. Previously, students within the Disability Studies minor here at Miami University proposed a Disability Cultural Center. The timing of this coincided well with the Miller's donation to Miami University in calling it the Miller Center for Student Disability Services. The goal of the Millers is to promote disability on campus, creating more access for all, above compliance, and what disability services has to do every day. Through their funds, we were able to furnish our disability cultural space. We were able to provide many resources within this space, and we're able to support students with disabilities in a more holistic way. Within our disability cultural space, we have a lounge which features seating for students and others to interact, engage, and celebrate disability culture. In this space, we have a coffee and tea bar for students to relax and get their caffeine fix, and as well as a space offers a television where we've had movie nights and other game nights for um, interaction among students. One of the main aspects of our disability cultural space is the showcasing of artwork by local disabled artists. We have canvas paintings hanging on the wall in addition to glazed ceramic pieces, bowls, and other unique designs throughout our center. We also have a technology cube in our space which offers various forms of assistive technology for students to use. We also offer free printing on campus for all students who want to come check out our disability cultural space. Student voice was instrumental in the creation of our disability cultural space. Their vision, their mission, and their drive truly propelled our space to be what it is today. From all of us here at Miami University, we thank you for joining us and hope you have a great day. Finally, we'll get the tour of the Disability Cultural Center at the University of Arizona from Cole Eskridge. Welcome to the University of Arizona's Disability Cultural Center. Uh, I'm Cole and I am our Campus Universal Design Consultant. And I'm Tony, and I'm the program coordinator for the Disability Cultural Center. And we're really excited and we feel really privileged to be able to virtually show you all around here. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, we'd love to be able to answer them for you. Uh, but I'm just going to hand things off to Tony right now to kind of explain her vision for uh, how she sees this space evolving. 
So our vision for the space is to provide dedicated space for disabled students to explore disability identity and culture and really open that up to shift the narrative of disability on campus from access and accommodations to a positive disability identity and culture. And we really also want to use this space to promote intersectionality between identities because largely disability gets left out of those conversations. So we really just want to have a bunch of programming that's rooted in disability identity and culture to share with the rest of campus. And the key there is while this is like the center for the programming that we really hope to have rippling effects across the university to encourage not only this being like the designated space for positive disability identity development, but that we can find those spaces anywhere so that our students are able to explore and feel affirmed in any area of the University of Arizona that they might be exploring. And so uh, with that, how about we start showing off some of the features of Come on in. Uh, So if we just take a quick peek over here, uh, what you're looking at is our a somewhat messy reception desk right now. Uh, but we just show this off just uh, to kind of show you the experience of folks coming in. Uh, we ask that people come in and scan their uh, university ID cards just so that that way we're able to keep track and we can report uh, for grants uh, to continue funding uh, the TCC going into the future. But yeah, all we ask is that and uh, we show people, they take out their card and they can just uh, place it on top of this uh, mechanized black box. Uh, we can record that they were here and then they're free to go and explore the main area as well. And so Tony will talk a little bit about this main space. This, this space is modeled with the universal design principles in mind because we wanna make sure that we're modeling appropriate access for all and, and really creating an affirming and welcoming environment. So around this space is um, a lot of opportunities for either group work or study space area. Um, this, this table has a lot of electronics already built in to make it easy for people to use the space. And we really see it as a collaborative um, space for people to work and be social. So it could um, be a space where you just come and study real quick, or it could be for a lot of group interaction and just a friendly space to go to eat lunch. Right, because I think originally the space was a technology lounge here at the university. And so we're trying to actively move it towards that more uh, social uh, use beyond just like what people are used to as like a quiet space to study as well. And then we also are super excited to show off our uh, brand new dry erase wall to kind of help contribute to that collaborative social feel. Sure. And it just allows people the flexibility to um, erase or make mistakes and just um, that collaborative space to really just engage with others. And so uh, we also envision this space to have a projector screen for any um, movie nights that we host or any other um, events that a screen might be nice because we really want to make sure that this space is a very social environment for disabled um, students and their allies to meet and socialize and just um, feel comfortable. Right. We really want to emphasize uh, not only just uh, a space that everyone can easily navigate but a space that flexibly meets the needs no matter what they might be of people on campus especially our partners across campus who want who we want to invite into this space as well. And we're also um, working with our partners across campus and we've been renting the space out for different events because of its accessibility and uh, flexibility and design because we want to make sure that what we're doing in the center is also making its way across campus and so that disabled students uh, feel comfortable in a lot of different areas across campus and not just the Disability Cultural Center. We feel that that's one of the biggest resources we can actually give the campus is modeling best practices and really getting people to know like what does it mean to create an event that is inclusive to anybody who might want to show up without necessitating special accommodation as well. And so inviting them here is a great way for us to share this amazing resource that we've been gifted by um, our Disability Resource Center and the university as a whole. So this area back here with these two partitions, um, right now it's an empty space, but our vision is to make, um, to make it a sensory uh, space 
for people to um, just kind of debrief and be able to get cozy maybe with some bean bags and kind of put in earbuds to just get away from all the social activity and just take a few minutes to themselves and we really just want to make sure that our space is really inviting and affirming for all and so that people don't feel like they need to ask for a specific accommodation and more that they just feel right at home regardless so and with that that is the disability cultural center at the university of arizona uh, thank you so much for your attention again if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to either of us uh, and we really look forward to talking to hopefully some of you soon yeah and thanks for coming to see our space bye, bye.